The Sultanate of Hobbio, also known as the Sultanate of Abia, was a 19th-century Somali kingdom in present-day northeastern and central Somalia and eastern Ethiopia. It was carved out of the former Magyatine Sultanate by Yusuf Ali Kenadid, cousin of the Magyatine Sultanate's ruler, Bokor Osman Mahmud. Administration. As with the Magyatine Sultanate, the Sultanate of Hobbio exerted a strong centralized authority during its existence, and possessed all of the organs and trappings of an integrated modern state. A functioning bureaucracy, a hereditary nobility, titled aristocrats, a state flag, as well as a professional army. Both Sultanates also maintained written records of their activities, which still exist. History. Rise of the Sultanate Initially, Yusuf Ali Kenadid's goal was to seize control of the neighboring Magyatine Sultanate, which was then ruled by his cousin Bakor Osman Muhammad. However, he was unsuccessful in this endeavor, and was eventually forced into exile in Yemen. A decade later, in the 1870s, Kennedy returned from the Arabian Peninsula with a band of Hadrami musketeers and a group of devoted lieutenants. With their assistance, he managed to overpower the local Hawiya clans and establish the Kingdom of Hobbio in 1878. In late 1888, Sultan Kennedy entered into a treaty with the Italians, making his realm an Italian protectorate. His rival Boko Osman would sign a similar agreement vis-à-vis -vis his own sultanate the following year. Both rulers had signed the protectorate treaties to advance their own expansionist objectives with Kennedy looking to use Italy's support in his dispute with the Omani Sultan of Zanzibar over an area bordering War Sheikh. In addition to his ongoing power struggle over the Magyatine Sultanate with Bokor Osman, in signing the agreements, the rulers also hoped to exploit the rival objectives of the European imperial powers so as to more effectively assure the continued independence of their territories. The terms of each treaty specified that Italy was to steer clear of any interference in the Sultanate's respective administrations. In return for Italian arms and an annual subsidy, the Sultans conceded to a minimum of oversight and economic concessions. The Italians also agreed to dispatch a few ambassadors to promote both the Sultanates and their own interests. However, the relationship between Hobbio and Italy soured when Sultan Kennedy refused the Italians' proposal to allow a British contingent of troops to disembark in his sultanate so that they might then pursue their battle against the Somali religious and nationalist leader Mohammed Abdullah Hassan's dervish forces. Viewed as too much of a threat by the Italians, Sultan Kennedy was eventually exiled to Aden in Yemen and then to Eritrea, as was his son Ali Yusuf, the heir apparent to his throne. However, unlike the southern territories, the northern sultanates were not subject to direct rule due to the earlier treaties they had signed with the Italians. Omar Samatar's rebellion though victorious against the Sultan's forces, the populace had yet to accept Italian rule without a fight. Commissioner Tribolcio, assigned with administering Hobbio, reported the movement of armed men towards the borders of the Sultanate before and after the annexation, as preparations were underway to continue the Corpus Aptia's advance into Magyatine, a new threat emerged. One of Sultan Ali Yusuf's commanders, Omar Samatar, attacked and captured Elbor on 9 November. The local populace sided with Omar, and soon enough the Italians had a full-scale revolution on their hands after Omar followed up his previous success with the capture of Eldera. The Corpus Aptia tried and failed to recapture Lbur from Omar. By 15 November the Italians had fled to Bud Bud, ambushed by partisans the whole way and rather diminished in forces and resolve. A third attempt was planned, but before it could be executed the commander of the operation, Lieutenant Colonel Splendorelli, was ambushed and killed between Bud Bud and Bulabada. Italian morale hit rock bottom, and Hobbio seemed a lost cause as Omar stood poised to reconquer Hobbio itself. 
In an attempt to salvage the situation, Governor Devecchi requested two battalions from Eritrea and assumed personal command. The rebellion soon spilled over the borders into the Benadir and western Somali land, and Omar grew increasingly powerful. The disaster in Hobbio shocked Italian policymakers in Rome. It was the ADWA fiasco of the First Italo-Ethiopian War all over again, and Italy's plans for East Africa were unraveling before their very eyes. Blame soon fell on Governor de Vecchi, whose perceived incompetence was blamed for Omar's rise. Rome instructed de Vecchi that he was to receive the reinforcement from Eritrea, but that the commander of the Eritrean battalions was to assume the military command and de Vecchi was confined to Mogadishu and limited to an administrative role. The commander was to report directly to Rome, bypassing de Vecchi entirely. As the situation was extremely confused, De Vecchi took former Sultan Ali Yusuf with him to Mogadishu. Mussolini vowed to reconquer all of Hobbio and move on to Majatine by any means necessary. Even reinstating Ali Yusuf was considered. However, the clans had already sided with Omar Samatad, so this was not as viable an option as it would appear. Before the reinforcements arrived, De Vecchi chose the age-old tactic of divide and rule, and offered great rewards money and prestige to any clans who chose to support the Italians. Considering the eons old clan rivalries which have been the bane of Somali states from time immemorial, it is a wonder this strategy hadn't been attempted sooner, and turned out to be far more successful than the Eritrean regiments in reversing the rebellion. With the steam taken out of the rebellion, and the military forces heavily reinforced with the battalions from Eritrea, the Italians retook Elbor on December 26, 1925, and compelled Omar Samatar to retreat into western Somaliland.